Look into the fire, my king. Look. I see fire. Keep looking. Stannis Baratheon, very unique character. But first, you must give yourself to the Lord of Light. I've said the words, damn you. Less compulsive than his brothers, Robert and Renly. Outwardly composed at all times and bound by his views of duty and honor, almost as much as the Honorable Ned Stark. There is a big metaphor in the books that defines Stannis. Quoting George R. R. Martin, I wish that the scene had been included in the TV series because for me, the peach was important, but it wasn't possible. So let's take a trip down memory lane and then wrap up the video by going over that scene and the metaphor. Let's start before the events of Season 1, Episode 1. During Robert's Rebellion, Stannis had to choose between his king and his brother. It was not an easy choice, but he chose his brother. Robert tasked him with holding Storm Zen, the family seat, while Ned, Robert, and John Aaron went off to war. Liberating towns from the yoke of the Mad King while I held Storm's End with 500 men. No one has forgotten your grace. No, Robert did. He gave Storm's End to Renly after the war. Renly never fought a day in his life. He was only a boy. So why did he give him Storm's End? Robert gave Stannis Dragonstone, which Stannis took as a slight to his honor. This might be true because Robert was kind of pissed that Stannis did not capture Viserys and Daenerys on Dragonstone. I never loved my brothers. Sad thing for a man to admit, but it's true. You were the brother I chose. But there's a chance that being given Dragonstone was an honor, because throughout Targaryen history, heir to the throne sat at Dragonstone and was called Prince or Princess of Dragonstone. Nonetheless, Stannis was pissed that Robert gave their little brother Storm's End, since that was the family seat. Robert told me to hold Storm's End, so I held it. Then he told me he was giving it to Renly, so I gave it up. Insult or no, I gave it up. Because Robert was my older brother and he was the king and I've always done my duty. He doled out the food to his wife and each of his men before he ate himself, a portion no larger than any other. When the rebellion was won, Stannis chopped off four of Davos' fingers as a penalty for past smuggling, but he knighted Davos as a reward for his heroism. Do your knuckle bones bring you luck? And it's four less fingernails to clean. Four fewer fingernails to clean. It reminds me of your justice. It was an honest punishment and you were good with the cleaver. You were a hero and a smuggler. A good act does not wash out the bad, nor a bad the good. So Stannis did not love his brothers, and he did not love his wife either. Apologies on behalf of Stannis for how crude this sounds, but he stayed with his wife, Selyse, and they would try to make a male heir once or twice a year. It was his duty. I have a wife. I took a vow. She's sickly. She disgusts you. I'm allowed to throw all my stamp to you. Sir Fisher, we're on an island. You hate fish. I hate a good many things, but I suffer them all the same. Now taking a step back, on their wedding night, King Robert was drunk and took Selyse's cousin into Stannis' room by mistake. She gave birth to Edric Storm, Robert's only recognized royal bastard. But Stannis felt slighted, so he had Edric Storm sent off to Renly at Storm's End. Gendry sort of absorbed Edric's role in the show in terms of King's blood and Melisandre. Show the boy to his chambers, have the maids draw him a bath and find him some decent clothes. What do you mean to do with him? You know what I mean to do with him. Then why bathe them and dress them in fine clothes? If it needs to be done, do it. Don't torture the boy. In addition to being dutiful, Stannis was very blunt. Straight business. In contrast to Renly, Stannis dressed mundane and even his pavilion was bare bones, whereas he looked at Renly and his camp as flamboyant. Here are a few funny examples of Stannis being blunt from the show. And I declare upon the honor of my house that my beloved brother Robert left... Wasn't my beloved brother? I didn't love him. He didn't love me. A harmless courtesy, Your Grace. A lie. Take it out. The boy Tommen and the girl Marcella being born of incest between Cersei Lannister and her brother Jamie Lannister. By right of birth... Jamie Lannister, the Kingslayer. Call him what he is. And her brother Jamie Lannister, the Kingslayer. I do this day lay claim... Make it Sir Jamie Lannister, the Kingslayer. Whatever else he is, the man's still a knight. First we ate the horses. We weren't riding anywhere. Not with the castle surrounded. We couldn't feed them, so fine, the horses. And the cats. Never liked cats. So fine. I do like dogs. Good animals, loyal. But we ate them. Do you know this wretched girl? Lion the Mormon. Your father's Randall Tarly. Fine soldier, your father. You don't look like a soldier. He said he'd bring me back a present from the capital. He won't be visiting, child. Why not? He's my friend. Sir Davos is a traitor. He's rotting in a dungeon cell for his crime. The foundation of Stannis' plot is that he's hell-bent on taking the Iron Throne. I never asked for this. 
No more than I asked to be king. We do not choose our destiny. But we must do our duty, no? And it's worth noting that in the books, Stannis discovered the truth about Robert's children. Instead of telling Robert directly, Stannis told John Aaron because Robert and Stannis were not close and thus it would have seemed self-serving, like he was trying to bump himself up in the line of succession. So in the beginning of the War of Five Kings, Stannis shunned potential allies by being 100% rigid. The time being you could make peace with your brother. I'll not make peace with Renly while he calls himself king. If not Renly or Grace, join forces with Rob Stark. Who'd steal the northern half of my kingdom? Joffrey, Renly, Rob Stark, they're all thieves. They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. The Iron Throne is mine, by right. All those that deny that are my foes. Whereas Renly was a little more flexible. Stannis did not waste time on mindless courtesies, which he viewed as lies. In the books, he occasionally rides away from his lords for private counsel with Sir Davos, something Davos realized would offend the other lords. Here's how they adapted it into the show. And you lead the fleet into Blackwater Bay. Your Grace, I'm honored, but my time on the sea was spent evading ships, not attacking them. The other lords won't be happy. I understand why the older families look down at me. Do you? Why? My father was a crabber. Our hands stink. And where were those lords when storms end starved? But throughout the story, Stannis did sometimes bend. But surely there are other ways, cleaner ways. Cleaner ways don't win wars. And I've never known you to hide from the truth. You come to lecture me on truth? I come to tell you that what I saw... All my brother's bannermen have come to my side. Except the Tyrells who fled like cowards. For example, after killing Renly, he pardoned Renly's followers. But he grit his teeth as he did it. Most of those lords should consider themselves lucky I don't hang them for treason. And later in the story, he grit his teeth even thinking about pardoning people, such as after he heard about the Red Wedding and he envisioned aligning with the remnants of the Northern Houses. What's funny is that the readers know that Stannis planned on penalizing those people, maybe even killing them, after he won the Iron Throne. Taking this a step further, he tried several times to legalize Jon for his own benefit, which ironically, Jon denied on grounds of duty and honor to the Night's Watch. I pledged my life to the Night's Watch. You're as stubborn as your father, and as honorable. I can imagine no higher praise. I didn't mean it as praise, honor that your father killed. Now, in addition to being bound by duty and honor, Stannis valued the opinions of men of like mind, such as Ned Stark. Stannis Baratheon is Robert's true heir. The throne is his by rights. Your father was an honorable man. He was your grace. What do you think he'd have done with him? Similarly, when Mance would not bend the knee, Stannis was visibly impressed. Stannis was definitely a great character because of all of this. On the one hand, he did some great selfless things like letting Jon borrow his ships to go to Hardhome. I need those ships. You get them back. I swear it. Have a safe journey, Your Grace. And thank you. And unlike Selyse, Stannis truly loved his daughter, Shireen, all along. She's a stubborn little beast. She's a child. You barely know her. She is sullen and stubborn and sinful. Why else would the Lord of Light have seen fit to mark her face? She needs the rod. She's my daughter. You will not strike her. I thought I'd be left at home. I know Mother didn't want to bring me. Why did you say that? She told me I don't want to bring you. She shouldn't have said that. Everyone advised me to send you to the ruins of Valyria to live out your short life with the stone men before the sickness spread through the castle. I told them all to go to hell. You are the Princess Serene of House Baratheon. And you are my daughter. It's worth noting that I often hear Shireen referred to as disabled or sickly, which is far from the truth. When children are cured of grayscale, they are immune to contracting grayscale as an adult. And in addition, these children are immune to grayscale's swifter cousin, the Great Plague. So if you want to be an ass and call her disfigured, go ahead. But Shireen is absolutely not disabled. If anything, she's enabled. But sorry, back to Stannis. So the duty has led him to do good things, like lend John ships and love his daughter. But it also made him callous. He was indifferent to the lives of individuals. What's one bastard boy against a kingdom? He burnt his brother-in-law alive at the stake. I ordered him to tear down his idols. He disobeyed. How many ships did he bring to your cause? How many men? A good deal more than you. And even imprisoned his most loyal follower, Sir Davos. 
I'm sorry about your son. I get the chance to tell you before. Good lad. Loyal lad. Stannis killed Mance, even though it ruined his chance to get the support of the wildlings. With respect, Your Grace, the Free Folk will never follow you, no matter what you do. You're the man who burned their king alive. They'd rather burn than fight for me, so be it. I leave their fate to you. You could execute them, that's the safest course. When the brutal weather caused Sellswords to abandon him, Mel asked him to burn Serene, but he denied her. We have someone better. And your blood runs through her veins. You lost your mind. Unfortunately, after Ramsay's 20 good men burnt his supplies, Stannis felt hopeless. Put last night's guards in chains. Either they fell asleep or they conspired with the enemy. Find out the truth and then hang them. But if we can't march forward and we won't march back... So he sent Davos back to the wall and he caved in about Shireen. He truly loved Shireen, which paints the past sacrifices in a different light. He didn't just burn strangers, he burnt family. Psycho, but it shows that he's a man of principle at least. He was bound by duty and very susceptible to being brainwashed by a fanatic. The darkness will devour them all, she says, the night that never ends, unless I triumph. But because he burned Shireen, more men left him, and his wife even ended her own life. Yet he kept moving forward. We march to victory, or we march to defeat. But we go forward, only forward. into marching formation onto Winterfell. That's what Stannis does. Stannis of House Baratheon, bound by duty and honor until the very end. Do you have any last words? Go on, do your duty. So now let's get to the peach. We have to go all the way back to the parley. Stannis is being Stannis, and Renly was pushing his buttons. Now I understand why you found religion in your old age. Watch yourself, Renly. No, no, I'm relieved. All of it's salt and smoke. Is he a ham? That's twice I've warned you. And suddenly, Renly reached into his pocket. Let's let George R. R. Martin tell you the rest. Quote, All this of snakes and incest is droll, but it changes nothing. You may well have the better claim, Stannis, but I will still have the larger army. Renly's hand slid inside his cloak. Stannis saw and reached at once for the hilt of his sword, but before he could draw steel, his brother produced a peach. Would you like one, brother? Renly asked, smiling. From Highgarden, you've never tasted anything so sweet, I promise you. He took a bite. Juice ran from the corner of his mouth. I did not come here to eat fruit. Stannis was fuming. My lords, Catelyn said, we ought to be hammering out terms of an alliance, not trading taunts. A man should never refuse to taste a peach. Renly said as he tossed the stone away. He may never get a chance again. Life is short, Stannis. Remember what the Starks say. Winter is coming. He wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. And later in the story, Stannis reflects back on the peach. Quote, Stannis only seemed to half hear him. I have no doubt Cersei had a hand in Robert's death. I will have justice for him, I, and for Ned Stark and John Arryn as well. And for Renly? The words were out before Davos could stop to consider them. For a long time, the king did not speak. Then very softly, he said, I dream of it sometimes, of Renly's dying, a green tent, candles, a woman screaming, and blood. Stannis looked down at his hands. I was still abed when he died, your Devon will tell you. He tried to wake me. Dawn was nigh, and my lords are waiting, fretting. I should have been a horse, armored. I knew Renly would attack at the break of day. Devon says I thrashed and cried about, but what does it matter? It was a dream. I was in my tent when Renly died, and when I woke, my hands were clean. Sir Davos could feel his phantom fingertips start to itch. Something is wrong here, the one-time smuggler thought. Yet he nodded and said, I see. Renly offered me a peach at our parley, mocked me, defied me, threatened me, and offered me a peach. I thought he was drawing a blade and went for mine own. Was that his purpose? To make me show fear? Or was it one of his pointless jests? When he spoke of how sweet the peach was, did his words have some hidden meaning? The king gave a shake of his head like a dog shaking a rabbit to snap its neck. Only Renly could vex me so with a piece of fruit. He brought his doom on himself with his treason. But I did love him, Davos. I know that now. I swear, I will go to my grave 
thinking of my brother's peach. That's pretty sad. They did not include the peach in the show, but let's close out the video getting George R. R. Martin's take on it. Quote, the peach represents, well, it's pleasure. It's tasting the juices of life. Stannis is a very martial man, concerned with his duty. And with that peach, Renly says, smell the roses, because Stannis is always concerned with his duty and honor and what he should be doing, and he never really stops to taste the fruit. Renly wants him to taste the fruit, but it's lost. Great or small, we must do our duty. What's one bastard boy against a kingdom? What is the life of one bastard boy against a kingdom? Everything. The boy must die. The birds have scales and the fish take wings.